Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has given us new life and hope. He has raised Jesus from the dead. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! Hello everybody and a warm welcome today as we have our morning worship on this, the third Sunday of Easter. My name is Kate Brown and I'm part of the ministry team here at St Guthlax. We start with our prayers of penitence. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength, and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. May the God of power and love forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we have our special prayer for today. Almighty Father, who in your great mercy gladdened the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord, give us such knowledge of his presence with us, that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life, and serve you continually in righteousness and truth, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. And now we can join with some members of the choir in singing the Gloria.
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. While the eleven and their companions were talking about what they had heard, Jesus himself stood amongst them and said, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified, and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were still disbelieving and wondering, he said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
speak in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Julie and I are steadily working our way through a DVD box set of the series Hercule Poirot, the series starring David Suchet, the Christian actor, as the famous detective in ITV's series based on Agatha Christie's writings. Each episode is a kind of puzzle. We hear of the events leading up to the crime, we see the mounting body of evidence as each clue is in turn uncovered, and we form views as to the psychology and the motivation of the principal characters. The question is, can we work out who did it and why they did it? And can we get to the right answer before the great detective himself reveals all? The Gospel accounts of Jesus' resurrection can read something like a detective story themselves. The background is, of course, Jesus' brutal execution on the cross. And his followers then hide themselves away, hide themselves away in the upper room where they had shared that last meal, the last supper, with Jesus on the night before he was killed. They're frightened. They're scared. They're scared for their lives, scared that they too may be arrested, put on trial, and killed. And of course, they're also in mourning, mourning over the death of their dear friend, their friend in whom they had placed so much hope. But then they hear that Jesus' tomb has been broken into, the stone has been rolled away, his body has disappeared. What's happened? What is this mystery? Some of them go out, go out and then come back saying that they've seen Jesus, that he's alive. How can this possibly be? The others ask themselves, it's beyond belief. They must be deluded. But then Jesus himself suddenly appears amongst them. Again, this could not be. It goes beyond reason. They must be imagining things. Their eyes are deceiving them. Or was it Jesus' ghost? Was Jesus now living the kind of shadowy half-life that some Jews at the time thought people entered into after they died? They're scared even more, frightened. But then Jesus calms them down and asks them, invites them to look at the evidence in front of their eyes. He asks them to look at him and to see the marks left by the nails in his hands and in his feet. He invites them to reach out and touch him, to feel the warmth of his skin and underneath the skin the structure of his bones. They start to wonder, but still they can't really grasp it, they can't really believe, it's too fantastic. So Jesus asks them to give him something to eat. And they set before him a piece of broiled fish, which he proceeds to eat. And then, later that evening, after Jesus had left them, there would have been the scraps of food left behind, lying on a dirty plate. A dirty plate which would remind them that Jesus really had been there. He really had been there. It hadn't been a dream. He hadn't, they hadn't imagined it. He was alive. He was truly alive. He wasn't some ghostly apparition. Jesus really had risen from the dead to new life. Not some shadowy half-life, but true life. Life in its fullest sense. He was very much alive and living in the truest sense of the word. The evidence was all there. The evidence is all there, set out clearly for us by the Gospel writers. And unlike when we read a detective novel, there are no false clues to obscure the truth. There are no red herrings put into the story, thrown in there by the author in an attempt to mislead us. No, it is the plain, unvarnished truth set before us. Death was not the end. Death is not the end. 
And by Jesus' death and resurrection, all who believe in him and repent receive forgiveness and the promise of a share in the true and perfect life that lies beyond death. The disciples whom Jesus met in that upper room both recognised and accepted the evidence that was before their eyes. They witnessed it. They believed it. And then accepted Jesus' command to go and tell others about it. So what about us? Do we accept the evidence that we read in the Bible? Are we persuaded by what others have told us about Jesus? Do we see the risen Jesus alive and at work in the lives of others? Do we feel him present in our own lives, guiding us and leading us forwards? If so, then we too are witnesses to the truth that Jesus Christ is risen. He is risen and he brings forgiveness of sins and the promise of eternal life beyond death to all who believe in him. And as witnesses, just like those first disciples of Jesus's, Jesus commands us to bear witness to the truth, to his truth, by sharing it with others so that they too may come to faith and welcome the risen Jesus into their lives as their loving Lord and Saviour. Amen. day that the Lord has made, let us pray for the people he has redeemed, that we may live as those who believe in the triumph of the cross. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That all people may receive the good news of his victory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer that those born to new life in the waters of baptism may know the power of his resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That those who suffer pain and anguish may find healing and peace in the wounds of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer that in the undying love of Christ, we may be united with all who have died in the faith of Christ. Remember your faithful servant, Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. Receive him into your loving arms, that for him death may be the gate to life in your eternal presence. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. And now we'll say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. At this point, we share the peace. 
If you're watching with someone else, you can share the peace with them in your usual way. If you're on your own, take a moment or two to think about those you would like to share God's peace with today. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. May the peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. For our affirmation of faith, we have moved across to the side chapel, which is where we have our Easter garden set up. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. A couple of notices. First of all, a reminder of our Guess the Baby competition. Uh, we've extended the closure date for entries to Friday the 23rd of April. So if you do have an entry and you haven't returned it yet, please do so by putting it into the box at the back of church by this coming Friday. Now on May the 16th, we'll be holding our church's annual meeting that will follow the 10 o'clock service here in church. And as part of the preparation for that, there's the opportunity for updates to be made to the electoral roll. Now the being on the electoral roll is a way of showing you, that you belong uh, to the church. If you're not on the electoral roll and would like to do so, then there are forms at the back of the church and they're also available on the web. Also, if you know that you've, your details have uh, changed, perhaps that you've uh, moved, then again, if you would fill in one of these forms with your updated details, that would be very much appreciated. Thank you. As we near the end of our service today, we leave with a prayer of blessing. God, who through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ has given us the victory, give us joy and peace in our faith. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us all and remain with us always. May we go in the light and peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. In the name of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. And we end our service today with that glorious hymn of praise, Angel Voices Ever Singing.